Okay, the third definition that we need to know is critical engine. Now, it's, it's a pretty straightforward definition. That the critical engine of a multi-engine airplane is the engine that, if it failed, would most adversely affect the control of the airplane during a critical phase of flight. So, in the Diamond Twin Star, the critical engine is the left engine. And in aerodynamics, you'll see later why that is a critical engine. But the left engine is critical, and in most, uh, I think in all Cessnas uh, that are multi-engine airplanes, not the push and pull, but the critical engine is the left engine. So, again, with this critical engine, it's the left engine. And remember that when an airplane has a critical engine, they both turn in the same direction. So, sitting in the Diamond Twin Star, looking at it from the pilot's seat, the, the propellers turn to the clock, clockwise on both engines. Okay, the next definition, the fourth definition on our multi-engine terms and definitions is VMC. The term is VMC. It stands for minimum control airspeed, not to be confused with minimum controllable airspeed. Minimum control airspeed is marked on our airspeed indicator with a red radial. We now have a new red radial that appeared. When we're single engine airplanes, we just had VNE. Now in multi-engine airplanes, we have a red radial at VNE and VMC. Now, VMC, minimum control airspeed, it's the speed at which the test pilot was able to cause the critical engine to be inoperative and maintain directional control within 20 degrees of his, of his or her initial heading and not more than five degrees of bank. Now, the test pilot, the manufacturer, they had to do this under a very strict set of guidelines. And the reason they, they did it that way is the FAA wanted everyone to, to march to the same drum. So when the test pilot goes up and calculates VMC, there's really eight things that he or she needed to make sure that they did. The first of the eight things is the, the manufacturer is going to load the aircraft to maximum gross weight. Then, when they load it to max gross weight, they're going to load it to aft CG, but within limits of the aircraft, within limits on the aft side of it, all the way aft within limits. Then, as the pilot does the flight and he or she are, is accelerating down the runway, the aircraft has to develop full power, or if it's an aircraft that requires less than that, takeoff power. And then they go airborne. And once they rotate, airborne, out of ground effect, raise the gear. Of course, the flaps were already in takeoff position. And then, after they're out of ground effect, gear up, then the aircraft loses in an engine. And it's a critical engine, and that engine is still windmilling. And the test pilot has to correct for that with maximum rudder deflection and no more than five degrees of bank to the good engine. Now, those are eight things that the test pilot does. Then that data is collected, taken back with the manufacturer, the numbers are crunched, and that gives us the ninth thing, which is we, we calculate it all as standard day conditions. Now remember, these are the eight things we used to certify the aircraft. And secondly, even though the manufacturer has to prove that he or she can, can maintain a speed or maintain control of the aircraft at VMC, it doesn't mean that he or she has to continue climbing out with it. You can actually have an aircraft certified with a known VMC that can be given you a descent during the entire time.